Okay, so today we're continuing with the idea of interactions. And here's today's example. Okay, so we have the Netflix underwear study. A researcher was interested in the important question, would people enjoy to binge watch original series on TV or on the computer? Okay, so today everybody binge watching uh, other shows, a lot of good shows on TV. And here's the important question, where is it better to see it on TV, on TiVo or something like that, or streaming, let's say with Netflix or any other pirate? She hypothesized that people will enjoy to watch TV more than on their computers. Okay. So she just wanted to examine TV versus computer. Okay. Just TV versus computer. So she can do that with a one-way anode, right? Or even a t-test in this case. Because we have an IV, which is the screen time. Right? Is it a TV or a computer? TV versus computer, and the TV is enjoyment. Okay? How much do we enjoy to watch? So we have, let's, let's say, a scale of 1 to 100. It's not really important. Okay? The higher the enjoyment, the higher the number, the more people enjoy. Please sit, please sit. Sit, sit, sit. Okay, so this is a very simple one-way anomaly. The story continues with the researcher's assistant. Always an assistant, right? There's always one way ANOVA developing into something else. There's always this story. This story always allows us to compare the idea of one way ANOVA and develop it into two way ANOVA. This will show us what can and what can't we see in what can't we see in one way ANOVA that we can see in two ways. The researcher's assistant, being an avid binge watcher himself, suggested that people will prefer TV binge watching. Notice this. They will prefer watching on the TV only when they are fully clothed. Okay. Guys, guys, back there, listen up. So the assistant suggests that they will they will prefer to watch it on the TV, right? He agrees with the researcher. But only when they are fully clothed, but not when they are in their underwear. Okay. So the assistant suggests that there is a complex relationship. Right? You come back from work, you're fully clothed, you're just tired, you want to binge watch, you're going to binge watch fully clothed, you prefer on the TV. It's late at night, uh, you, can't, you can't fall asleep, it's early in the morning. You're not really close, you'll prefer to watch it on your uh, computer screen. Okay. So, what is the assistant saying? He's saying there is a complex relationship between the screen type, right? TV versus computer, and your clothing, right? And your state of clothing. Okay. It's not a very simple relationship. So, to examine this question, he recommended to measure what do people wear while they binge watch full clothing or just their underwear. In order to examine the assistant's hypothesis, you can't just examine whether they watch TV or the computer, right? It's not possible. You need another variable. You need to measure both the screen type and the clothing. You need to add the design, the IV of clothing. And the DV is still enjoying. So is the idea of the hypothesis here clear? Right? He's simply saying, look, it's not as straightforward as you suggested. It's not just that TV is always better. TV is better when you're clothed. TV is not better when you're not clothed. So, basically, and we're going to come back to that, the assistant is suggesting that there is an interaction. The effect is not a, a regular effect. It's not just that TV is better than the computer screen, but there's a complex relationship, an interaction 
between the two IVs. Now, this is just to make sure we understand the hypothesis. We're going to see a lot of data today. Okay? And each screen, we're going to have a, a, a separate data set in order to examine the different types of interaction. Okay? So eventually, we'll come back to data that matches this hypothesis. Okay? But up until then, it's just going to be different numbers. And each data set, we're going to analyze it anew. Okay? Okay. Any questions about the hypothesis? Is it clear why do we need both IVs for this? Okay. So let's remind ourselves what are main effects. Okay. Main effects are important to us. It will be important for today's recitation. Uh, sorry, today's lesson. By the way, I had a nice experience uh, switching, taking over Eliana's recitation. It reminded me of something. Uh, it's very different to teach you guys in the class and teach the, the recitation. In the recitation, we have like close contact. And it made me understand how important are the recitations. I mean, here, the most I can expect is that you'll get something, right? You'll get a hint of the information. If you understand everything, that's wonderful, OK? But most of you, I guess, won't understand everything. It's a classroom, it's a big classroom. You can't really understand everything in this context. Okay? But it's good for you to hear it once before you go to your recitation. I had a situation where I was TA where the student just stopped coming to the class. And it's very difficult for the TA to teach everything from zero. Okay? This way, you heard it once, you have some intuition about what's going on, and then you just practice it. Go from scratch. Okay, so main effects is part of last week, uh, last week's material, and just let's remind what it means. So, in order to calculate main effects, we can't look within the table. What we need is to look at the marginal means. Look at the margins. So, what's the marginal means? We have to calculate them, right? So, what's the marginal mean? of streaming. Okay. So we have streaming in your underwear is 50. Streaming with while clothed is 20. So the average of streaming in general is 35. Okay. 35. And for TV, 70 and 40. Okay. So 70 plus 40 divided by 2, you get 55. Okay. Now, notice the data. Try to understand what the data is telling you. It's a whole story within this small data set. So we can see a lot of things here. And again, we're going to see a lot of examples. But let's see what this data set can tell us. So when you're in your underwear, TV is better than streaming. Okay. Can you see that? People in their underwear. Enjoy TV better than streaming. By how many points? 20, right? And when you're clothed, people also enjoy TV better than streaming. By how many points? 20. 20 points. So in general, if you enjoy TV better than streaming, both when you're clothed and in your underwear, and in both cases, you have a benefit of 20 points. You won't be surprised that the overall benefit, right? The overall benefit of watching TV is still 20 points, right? So when we look at the margins, we look at the overall average of streaming versus the overall average of TV. And if there is a difference, Right? The difference is not just numerical, it tells a story. On average, overall, regardless of what you wear, you prefer to watch TV than streaming. Okay. So this is in the table. Any questions about that? 
So streaming versus TV, we compare streaming versus TV, right? All the colors also are color coded. So you have the blue here, you have the blue. So streaming versus TV, we compared the two levels of screen type, okay? So this means that we have a main effect for screen type. A main effect of 20 points. Now, how will I see if there is a main effect for your clothing? What do I need to do? Right, the other underwear. So I need to see what's the overall average for underwear versus the overall average of clothing. And we can see that there is a main effect there as well, right? We have a benefit of 30 points. And notice, we compared underwear to clothing, right, clothes, underwear versus clothes. This means that we look at the effect of clothing, right? This can't be the effect for screen type, right? We're not looking into the levels of screen type. We're looking at the levels of clothing. So underwear versus clothing, this is the main effect for clothing. Okay, so already we have a story. In this data set, we prefer to watch TV and we prefer to be in our underwear. Okay. So, already a story. Now, today we're going to teach you how to look at figures. So, here is the figure. Now, figures are very important in research in general. Why is that? What's a figure? A figure is a way to transmit your data in a visual sense. It's a way to, uh, how do I say it? Minimize the time that someone needs to read your data. Okay? But every figure has its limitations. Some figures are better than others for certain types of data. So not all data will be clear from figures. Okay? And this is something we need to know. This is something that you need to know as future researchers, or future writers of research method uh, works and empirical seminars. So sometimes you'll see when you read for the research methods that you're going to read a lot of articles. But you're not going to spend a whole lot of time to reading the entire article. At some point, what you're going to do is read the abstract and look for a figure. Okay? You're going to read the abstract, okay, this is what they did in general, and then you're going to scroll down, look at a figure, okay? try to understand the figure in about 10 seconds, and that's the amount of time you're going to spend on the article. Okay? I'm telling you that's what uh, people in their thesis are doing, their PhDs are doing. You're not going to read the whole thing. There are so many articles out there. So the figure has to be really representative of what you want the reader to understand. Okay, having said all that. So this figure, we have several aspects. But basically, basically, it's the same thing, right? It's the same data. So this point is clothed, right? It's the purple line. Clothed while streaming. Okay? It's one data point from our table. And this data point, purple line, clothed while watching TV. Okay? And this is streaming while in underwear, and this is TV in underwear. Okay? So it's the same data. And some people will have a trouble seeing that. Okay? Some people are good at reading figures, it's intuitive for them, some people are not. So the first thing I want to tell you, in general, in this course as well, if you're not good at reading figures, if it's not intuitive for you, it's fine, it's okay. Half of the people, it's not intuitive for them. You can simply transform the figure to a table. Okay? You can always do that. If it's not comfortable, just transform the figure into a table. The table won't lie. Okay. You just have to make sure you understand what are you 
right, right? You have to understand that this is streaming, okay? Clothes streaming, underwear streaming. TV, clothes TV, underwear. Yes? Uh, I know where it's also possible to do like uh, multiple ways in normal more than two. Yeah. How do you represent that in the table or in the table? So we're going to see three way aroma in about two lessons from now. Okay. So we said the figure is a visual representation of the table. Okay, I also said if you're not comfortable with the figure, it's fine. You're about 50% of you won't be. Just please transform it back into a table. Don't make a mistake. It's just a way for you to understand the story and the data. Now, do you see any representation of the main effects in this figure? Not really, right? We have the four data points. We have the inside of the table. But there are no margins on the figure. Okay? So if you want to look at main effects in the figure, look in the table. <laughs> okay? That's my message about main effects. The figure is not meant to say something about the main effect. It's not the purpose of this kind of thing. Okay. So this figure is not designed to look at main effects. It is designed to look at simple effects. We're going to see that in a few seconds. So the first message is really look at the table. But if you insist, if you really want to just look at the figure itself, you just have to understand what you're looking at. So, for example, you can also find the average result for each group in the figure. Right? So, the marginal mean is the average result for example, underwear. Right? It's the average result for example, clothing. So, if I want to look at this main effect, the main effect of screen time, I have to look and find the average for streaming and the average for TV. What's the average for streaming? We look streaming while clothed, streaming while in underwear, and we get this number right, between the two lines. Street, uh, TV while clothed, TV while in un underwear, and you get this point. So it's not in the figure, but you can add points. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for whether the two points are on the same line on the y-axis. Same line on the y-axis. This axis, right? So this is lower than this. So we see there's a main effect. Is it clear what I'm trying to say about the figure? Okay. Is it clear why this point is the average that represents streaming in general? Okay, so this is again average for TV in general. They're not on the same height, right? The y-axis represents how enjoyment we have. Not on the same height, so there is a main effect. Not intuitive, right? Agreeing with me that you're not, it's not really an intuitive way to look at the main effects? Okay, but I have to teach you that. Um, how do we see the main effect for clothing? So we need an average for underwear, an average for clothes. So to get the average for underwear, I have Underwear streaming, underwear TV, the average will be here in the middle. So I get these two points. The average of underwear, the average of clothing. And again, they're not on the same heights, right? We're not looking at the x-axis. The x-axis is one variable. The lines are the other variable. I'm looking whether they're on the same height or not, they're not, so there is a main effect for clothing. Okay, and again I say, I think the hundredth time, main effects, look in the table, okay? Just try to look in the table, it's easier that way. 
Okay, any questions about main effects in general? Their meaning, the way we find them, the way we interpret them? Okay. So this is a reminder about main effects. Let's move to simple effects. Simple effects. I don't need to calculate the margins. I'm just looking within the table. So that's something we already said. Okay. Simple effect has a not so simple definition, but it is very simple to understand. We're not looking at the overall effect. We're looking at the effect among one group. So let's look at this effect. Who can tell me how do I describe this simple effect? This is the simple effect of what? Screen. Right, of screen type, we call it. But you're absolutely right. Okay, so this is the simple effect of the screen type. Among who? Among the underwear group. Okay, we're just focusing on people who are in their underwear and asking them, do they, did they prefer TV or streaming? So, what do they prefer? TV, right? And this, okay, so streaming versus TV, right? We compared streaming to TV. This is the ultimate indication that what we're looking at is the simple effect of the screen type, right? This is not the simple effect of underwear. This is the simple effect of the screen type. Among the underwear group. And we see that the benefit is 20 points. Is it clear for everyone in the room? Please, please, please tell me why this is the simple effect for screen type among the underwear group. Okay. So this is, of course, the simple effect for screen type among the closed group. Okay. Already we can notice that the simple effects are identical. Right? The simple effects have the same size. How do we call this situation? No interaction. No interaction. Okay? Or additivity. It's also a good name. But we'll talk about interactions in a minute. Now let's look at the figure. In the figure, it's easy to look at these simple effects. Basically, this kind of figure is designed for you to look at these simple effects. So each line represents a simple effect of the x-axis variable. The x-axis variable. This is the x-axis variable. Right? Streaming versus TV. So I can focus really easily on one of the groups of the other variable. So I focus on the red line, just zooming in on the red line. The red line is the underwear group. The underwear group, we can see there's a simple effect. It's easy to see that because there's a skew, right? It's not a horizontal line. It's slightly skewed. Whenever we see this kind of skew, we know there's a simple effect for the x-axis variable. So there's a simple effect, simple effect for the underwear and simple effect for the clothing, right? Very simple to see that. You also said that there's no interaction. What's a good indication that there's no interaction? What can you say about these lines? They're parallel, right? Being parallel means that this simple effect, this skew, is the same simple effect as this. It's the same skew. Okay? It goes up the same amount of degrees. It goes up the same amount of points, basically. OK. Any questions about why these two lines represent the simple effects. Yes. Well, it's not about that. Okay, yeah, um, sure. It's just about the effects in general, the main effect and simple effect. Yeah. How, like, what is the point in doing it, and how does that relate to the calculation of 2A ANOVA? Because mm -hmm. we still haven't even gotten into it. Right. Yet. So, like, is this just, like, the theoretical background to make sure that you have some kind of effect to know which direction to look in, or mm -hmm. am I mistaken? 
Okay, so first of all, what I'm trying to say is we're going to look next week at the uh, inferential statistics. The TAs are going to start and then we're going to repeat over that. Um, first, we do need to understand the story behind the numbers. And that's my, that's my point here, that we have not just numbers, not just values, we have a story. And we have to make sure that we understand the story before we go to inferential statistics, right? Because in a t-test, it was very simple to understand the story. Coffee versus no coffee. If there's a difference, we not want to know if it's a real difference or not. But the interaction is a bit more complex to understand the basics of it. So this, this is really the basics of understanding before we go into inferential statistics. Yeah? It tells us kind of where the difference is, whether it's a yeah. difference um, between the two different groups or within one group. Right, exactly, okay. exactly. We want, we want to, to make sure that we completely understand the story before we go into inferential statistics. Because inferential statistics adds a level of complexity to it, right? This is, now we say that every effect is a real effect. But in inferential statistics, we can look at the table and then it's a bit more complex because what seems like a real interaction might not be an actual real interaction. So we're going to take it step by step. Yeah. So if we have no interaction, then are we going to run a, like, a test on it? Good question. If there's no descriptive interaction, there's absolutely no way that the unknown before the interaction will be significant. Basically, you don't even have to do the interaction to do that. But the two-way ANOVA will give you answers also for the main effects. So you're still going to run the interaction to look at the main effect. But you already know that there is no interaction. So, good. OK. So again, this figure is easy to read if you're looking at the x-axis variable. But we can also read this figure looking at the lines variable, right? The lines variable is the clothing in this case. So let's look at the table, okay? What values should I look at if I'm looking for the simple effect of clothing among the streaming group? Give me the two numbers, 50 and 20. Everybody sees that? Underwear versus clothing, okay? So of course we're looking at the simple effect <coughs> of the clothing variable among the streaming group, okay? Among the streaming group. And of course, if you understood this, you understand that this is underwear versus clothing, the simple effect of clothing among the TV. So again, the Table doesn't lie, it's very easy to read if you know how to read it. Where do we see these simple effects in the figure? You have to find the, act, the points that you want to compare, right? The figure is a way to translate information, so you have to know to make sure that you know how to read it. So in this case, underwear in streaming versus clothes in streaming. So we're looking at the streaming group. Right? So here's your underwear in streaming, and here's your clothes in streaming. So the first simple effect is here. Right? It's the difference between this point and this point. And we said that every difference on the y-axis represents a simple effect, right? Or an effect. So this is this. These are these 30 points, plus 30 here, plus 30 here, right? It's the same thing. And of course, this is the simple effect of streaming. Sorry, this is the simple effect of, see, I, I am not confused. Simple effect of clothing among streaming. This is the simple effect of clothing among TV. What would happen if there was no simple effect? The points would? Converge, right? It'll be the same point because we're looking at differences on the y-axis. Okay, so went through a revision about the simple effects. Let's continue with the interaction. Now we talked about this a few moments ago, right? 
we said that the simple effects have the same size. 70 minus 50 equals 20. I would say even plus 20 to make the point clear. 40 minus 20 is also plus 20. It's the same size of the simple effect. So there is no interaction. The effect of screen type was equal whether people wore underwear or wore, uh, or wore a cloak. Okay. Simple effect of screen among people wearing underwear equals the simple effect of screen among people wearing clothes. This means that there is no interaction. And as we can see, the lines are parallel. This is the best thing that the figure can, can tell us. You can look at the figure, and without a moment's hesitation, you can see that there is no interaction in this case. Right? I can show you a figure. Lines are parallel, no interaction. Lines are not parallel, there is an interaction. Lack of interaction will always produce parallel lines. The one exception is when they completely converge, and then it's not really parallel mathematically. But it's the same idea, okay? Okay, is it clear why parallel lines represent an interaction? Uh, no interaction, sorry. Okay, parallel line, no interaction. Good. Let's look at two more examples. Okay, let's try to analyze them together. So be with me. First of all, can we see an interaction here? Yes. yes, right? The lines are not parallel. So let's analyze this, okay? The red line, we're focusing on which group? Underwear. Underwear group. So we're looking at the effect of screen time. Is there a simple effect of screen time? Yes. Yes. How can we see that? The line is not horizontal, right? So, simple effect of screen among underwear, 70 minus 50 is plus 20. Okay. Purple line, is there a simple effect of screen among the clothed group? Yes, yes right? The line is not horizontal. There is. Okay. Notice, these simple effects are not the same. Interesting point, not only they're not the same, they have different directions. We're going to get that to the, that point soon. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, what are we comparing? We're focusing on the streaming group, okay? And we're comparing the two lines, underwear versus clothes. So this is simple effect for clothing, right? Is there a simple effect for clothing in this no. case? No, right? Is it clear? Why not? They're converging on the same point. So, no simple effect of clothes among streaming because 50 minus 50 is zero, right? What does that mean? And in this case, if you're streaming, it's not important if you're clothed or wearing underwear. You'll enjoy it just the same. Okay? That's the meaning. Don't leave it at the level of a title that you don't understand, simple effect of clothing among streaming. That's not relatable. Try to translate it into something that you do understand. And final point, okay, what are we comparing? Again, right, clothing, underwear versus clothes among the TV group. Is there a simple effect? Yes, because the lines are not converging, right? It's not the same point. So in this case, 60, oh, sorry, it's, not, it's 70. 70 minus 40, the change. Okay, so 70 minus 40 equals plus 30. It's a simple effect. One more and we'll continue. This means that we have an interaction, and you can see that the lines are not parallel. Again, are the lines parallel? No, no meaning an interaction, right? Let's focus on the red line. Simple effect of the x-axis, it's a screen time. Screen time among the underwear, there is a simple effect because the line is not horizontal. Purple line, is there a simple effect here? No, no the line is horizontal. 
right? Streaming versus TV. That's the effect of screen time among the closed group. No simple effect. This thing, 50 minus 20, what are we looking at? Simple effect of clothing among the streaming group, okay? Is there a simple effect? Yes, good. So we can continue and say there is a simple effect here. Good. This is the kind of practice I want you to do over and over again until it sits clearly, okay? In the test, you won't have time to second guess yourself and doubt yourself about these kind of things, okay? The questions that we're going to ask in the test are very easy, very similar to this kind of question, okay? But you can't believe the stress of the test will make you second guess yourself unless it's automatic. That's what stress does. If it's not crystal clear, you're going to second guess yourself. Wait, am I looking at the simple effect of this or that? How do we call simple effect? Wait, what are we looking at? People get confused when they're stressed. Don't get confused. You just write it down. Hmm? You just write it down. You write everything down. Exactly. That's a good advice. Okay. Good advice. If you want to write everything down, write down the story. Tell tell yourself what is going on. Yes. One thing, right? There's if there's a horizontal line, you have to understand what's not a simple effect here. Because then you're looking at the closed group, right? And you're looking at the, this variable. But in the first case we saw, this was a no simple effect. Right? When the points converged. So in this case, there's no simple effect of the line variable. And in this case, there's no simple effect of the x-axis variable. So you have to make sure. Don't, don't think of it as a rule. Think of it as something that you can read out and understand. And again, if you don't like the figure, translate into it into a table. We always have the values really read readable. Okay, We're never going to give you a figure without the labels. OK. This means we have an interaction. Good, good. I'm feeling that we're in a good place to continue on. Now, we're going to talk about what's called an ordinal interaction. Ordinal interaction. So let's see, first of all, is there an interaction here? Yes, yes right? The lines are not parallel to one another. Let's analyze the simple effects. Let's look at the simple effects of screen time. Okay. TV versus streaming, TV versus streaming. So there are two simple effects. And what can you say about their direction? They have the same direction, right? TV is better than streaming in both cases. TV is better than streaming in both cases. The benefits of TV compared to streaming is not the same benefit. But in general, you can say that TV is better than streaming always. TV is better than streaming always, right? And you hear the phrasing, overall, TV is better than streaming. And this goes for both simple effects. So it will also go with the main effect, right? The effect of TV on the margins is actually the average effect of both simple effects. This effect is 20 plus 20. This effect is plus 30, so the main effect will be plus 25. Now look, all these effects are aligned. Both the simple effects and the main effects are aligned. Can you all see that? Now, let's say you're a professional 
uh, 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 Netflix research, okay? And I come to you and I ask you, dear experts, I want to binge watch. Which will I prefer? Will I prefer to watch it on the TV or on my computer? What's your answer? TV, right? Everyone heard the question? If you're the professional, you will always recommend the TV. It's straightforward. Of course, you can add afterwards, but look, you'll even enjoy it better. The benefit of TV to streaming will be even larger when you're closed. Okay? I'm not saying that it will suggest that you will be closed, but the benefit will be larger. Uh, no, you always recommend. Yeah. Why would you always recommend? I mean, I would, I would uh, recommend computer if you're in your because that's more than TV when you're in your underwear. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. let's say okay. So you recommended TV. If you're wearing. Think about it. Okay. So you're the expert. Now I'm asking. You said TV. Wait. But what if I'm wearing clothes? Clothes. You recommend TV then? Let's look at the simple yeah. effect of those. Yeah. But what if I'm in my underwear? Would you recommend TV then? Yes. Right? No matter my clothing situation, the recommendation of TV always goes. Right? We're always looking either this effect, this effect, or this. We won't compare okay. streaming in underwear with TV while clothing. Okay. And yeah. also, you said before, uh, TV is always better. That makes sense to me. Then you said overall. Yeah. Okay. It's better overall. Than, so overall, you can have an overall better uh, yeah. an interaction that says sometimes. So we'll see the other types of interaction. But in this situation, right, both simple effects are aligned with each other and the main effect. So in this situation, the, the answer is re really straightforward. But isn't underwear, I mean, underwear should also always be better, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so notice now we only looked at one angle, right? But yes. Why don't you compare uh, close watching TV with streaming underwear? Is that a complicated effect or just doesn't We just effect? don't do that. We always look at one simple effect, one simple effect. We don't look across. We don't do that because it's not possible? We just because then you have two effects. Right? We always want to separate, to make sure we understand what gives us a specific effect. We always look at one variable. Okay. Right? And moving from here to here, it's a combination of both. You don't know which one of them caused it. Okay, so the simple effect of screen type among underwear is in the same direction, but not the same size. Same direction, not the same size as screen type among clothes. Different size, but both have the same direction and the same direction as the main effect. This is called an ordinal interaction. Okay? This is called an ordinal interaction. What's ordinal? It says, it means it keeps the order, okay? Order of what? Of the main effect. The interaction is there, it's there, but it keeps the order of the main effect. The answer to this question, is TV more enjoyable than streaming? Yes, okay? There's no complication here. But notice, we looked at the angle of the screen time. Okay, this will be important in a few slides. This is the ordinal interaction for screen time. Right, this means that we can look at it from the other angle as well. But we chose at this moment to look at it from the angle of the screen time. So we're describing now an interaction from the angle of screen time. 
the simple effects of the screen type keep the order of the main effect of the screen type. So this is an ordinal interaction for screen type. Okay, is this idea clear? No. Okay, so again, once more. So we're looking at this simple effect, right? This is a simple effect of the screen type among the underwear. Then we're looking at this simple effect, simple effect of screen type among clothing. We can also look at the main effect, right? Simple effect of screen type. Sorry, main effect of screen type. And you can see that in all cases, TV is better than screen. All the simple effects go in the same direction. In this case, if we analyze the screen type, we'll say there is an interaction, and we're going to name this interaction. We're going to name this interaction an ordinal interaction from the angle of screen type. Or, in short, ordinal interaction for screen type. Right? This means that we can describe the interaction from the angle of the screen type. Of course, we can describe the interaction from the angle of the clothing. Okay, we'll do that soon. Because yes. it's both better on one right. side of the right. screen Right, right, exactly, exactly. How can we see that in the figure? Both lines go in the same direction, right? Both lines go up. Now, of course, it's, 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 a, it's a fiction. It's not really going up. I could have crossed it. I could have put TV on the other side, and then I could say it goes down. But the main thing, it goes in the same direction. Okay? TV is always better than streaming in this example. OK. So again, this is an ordinal interaction for screen. If there's an ordinal interaction, you can understand there's a situation where it's not ordinal, right? In other words, it's called, <coughs> ah, okay, sorry, it's called disordinal, but here's the analysis from the other side, okay? This is the ordinal interaction from the other side. So now we're looking at the simple effects of clothing, once among streaming, once among TV, okay? You can see that underwear is better than clothes in this case. Underwear is better than clothes in this case, okay? Of course, the main effect will tell you the same thing, okay? The overall effect will be the average of the two simple effects, okay? So, the simple effects of clothing are different in size, right? 40, in this case, does not equal to 30. But both have the same direction, and the same direction is the main effect. Underwear is better than being clothed. This is an ordinal interaction for clothing, right? From the angle of clothing. Because if you're asked a question, is it here? Uh, that's what I'm going to say. If you're asked the question, is underwear more enjoyable than being clothed when you binge watch? The answer is yes. It's a resounding yes, because in both cases, whether you're streaming or you're watching TV, underwear is better. In both cases, right? Yeah. And streaming, underwear is better. I'm watching TV, underwear yeah. is better. Okay. So in both cases, I'm better off watching on, in my underwear. Now, how do we see it in the figure? We said that these are the simple effects. Okay? One simple effect, second simple effect. We have to look if the points, if the red point is above the purple point in both cases. Right? This goes up. This goes up. Okay. This was from the other angle. Maybe a bit more confusing than the first one, but it's the same idea. Yes. Every time you watch 
comment that the effect is larger when streaming. So what, um, I mean, I guess it make it, it's important for the inferential statistics to know the, the point effect is larger, but from the simple effect perspective, we don't really care which effect is larger or smaller, right? Because we know that one, even with regards to the effect, one is greater than the other. Even if the effect is smaller than the other one, mm -hmm. it's still the small and the small effect might still be preferable, right? So this just I, I agree with you. It just tells us the story. Okay. Again, we don't we don't care about it <laughs> from the mathematical point of view. Right. We care about it from the, the story point of view, right? If this is your study, you want to know what's going on. You want to understand your data completely. The simple effects will give you an easy way to understand that. That's the problem. I told you something about sugar, right? You focus better when you eat sugar, and this is my favorite uh, hippo. Any other questions? Okay. So, I started to say before, if there is an ordinal interaction, there must be a not ordinal interaction or a disordinal interaction. Look at the lines, first of all. What's the difference before now and now? Now and now. What is going up? One is going down. Right? Let's analyze it together. Of course, this is a new data set. Okay. This is the data set the assistant was hoping for. Okay. Remember the, re the assistant's hypothesis. He said that watching in your underwear, you'll prefer to watch on your computer. So when you're in your underwear, streaming is better than your TV. But when you're clothed, TV is better than streaming. Two simple effects in different directions. And you can see that there is a main effect, but is the main effect important anymore? Right? The answer became complex. Now you're the professionals, you're the, the Netflix professional, okay? And I'm asking you, is it better to watch TV or watch it streaming? You have to say, look, it's complex. It depends. What are you planning to wear, right? Are you planning to be clothed at the time? If so, Never. you should watch TV. Are you planning to be in your underwear? If so, you should stream. Okay. So in this case, the simple effects don't keep the order of the main effect. They don't keep the order of each other, and they don't keep the order of the main effect. One of them, at least, is different from the main effect. In this case, if the original researcher did the one-way ANOVA, her answer will be very, very different from the truth, right? The effect the researcher would have found in one way and another would tell you, oh, look, there is a small, small effect for TV, okay? But if you look at the two variables together, this makes the main effect all, almost redundant. So, notice, the simple effects are not only different in size, but they have a different direction. TV is worse than, is not better than streaming among the underwear group. Minus 20. Okay. Minus 20 because I did TV minus streaming. But TV is better among the closed group, plus 30, because 40 minus 10. This is a disordinal interaction for screen type, right? We looked at the simple effects of screen type, meaning we analyzed it from the angle 
of the screen type, and we describe it from the angle of the screen type. The simple effects are not in line with the main effect, making it less relevant. And in the figure, you can see that one line is going down, one line is going up. And is TV more enjoyable than streaming? It's complicated. Or not necessarily. So I think this is the most interesting kind of an interaction. Okay? Because an ordinal interaction tells you an elaborate story. Okay? It does add information to what you knew from the main effect. But this interaction, the disordinal interaction, really makes the main effect not as relevant anymore. Okay. Knowing just the main effect gives you a very small part of the story. OK, any questions about a disordinal interaction? These kind of interactions are really the mo most interesting kinds to read about when you're reading a, a, a paper. Okay? You'll see in this kind of paper, uh, I'm writing a paper right now, and, I'm, and there's a method about how to write the results. So the point is, what we're taught is, don't elaborate on something that's not interesting to the reader. Okay? And this is really the kind of thing that can be exactly that. I'm detailing about the main effects. I'm saying this main effect was significant and this main effect was significant. If I know that the interaction is disordinal, okay, I'm not going to even elaborate on the main effects. I'm just reporting it because I have to report everything. I'm not reporting it and then I'm saying, however, the interaction was significant. The data shows that one simple effect was in one direction. And one simple effect was in the other direction. So the significant main effect that I found is no longer relevant. You shouldn't look at the main effect anymore. It's not really interesting to us anymore. The interaction, however, is very interesting. On the other hand, if, the, if I found an ordinal interaction, I would say what's the main effect. I would say, I found a main effect of this and that. Group A was higher in their accuracy than group B. We also found an interaction. This difference between group A and group B was larger in one condition than it was in the other condition. But the main effect was the same. OK. So we analyzed a disordinal interaction. And we gave this definition. Okay? They, have not, they have a different direction. We don't just care about the number anymore. It's not just different size. It's a different direction. We have one small point to make. What happens when there is no simple effect in one case? So we see a horizontal line. Horizontal line already indicates to us, OK, one of the simple effects is missing. Is no simple effect a direction? It is disordinal or disordinal. So we call this a disordinal interaction. There is a debate, but in this course, this is called a disordinal interaction. Why would it be, I mean, even if just one, uh, one condition doesn't have a simple effect, we still have a, a main effect. If, there, if we're not the same, it's disordinal. Right? So, so let's, let's, let's analyze it together, OK? So is there a simple effect of the screen among the underwear? No, right? 50 equals 50. If you look at the red line, the red line is horizontal. Is there a simple effect among the closed group? Yes. OK. The main effect will tell you that TV is better than the screen time. But if you were the, that expert, that streaming expert, Netflix expert, and I come to you, and I ask you this specific question, is it better for me to watch TV than to stream? The answer here is not necessarily. 
Okay? The answer is not necessarily, because if you're clothed, then the answer is yes. If you're in your underwear, it makes no difference. Right? If you're in your underwear, it makes no difference if you're watching TV or streaming. So, again, different direction. Now, we call zero a different direction than a plus. Because zero is no direction. I almost had the intuition of writing plus zero, right? That's the regular way we would write it. But it's not plus zero. It could just say be minus zero, OK? So zero is not a direction for us. So when one of the simple effects is missing, we would say that this is a disordinal interaction. Answer a question? Yes. OK. Any questions about the two types of the disordinal interactions? OK. So is TV more enjoyable than streaming? It's complicated or not necessary. From the other direction, here's a question for you. If I found a disordinal interaction for screen time, does that necessarily mean that I found a disordinal interaction for clothing? That's a good intuition. Most people would say yes. A lot of students say yes. Okay. The type of the interaction is not a symmetrical phenomenon. We said that the existence of an interaction is symmetrical. Okay. If I found an interaction for screen time, I necessarily found the interaction for the clothing. Okay? But the description of the interaction, its meaning can be very different. It's different simple effects. Right, different simple effects, exactly. So in this case, we saw that this is a disordinal interaction for screen time. The simple effects of screen time are not aligned with the main effect of screen time. Let's look at it from the other end. So what are we looking at? We're looking at these, right? So this is the simple effect of clothing among streaming group. And this is the simple effect of clothing among the TV group. Okay. And they're both aligned. They're both aligned to one another. Okay? The, they're this underwear is better than clothing. Underwear is still better than clothing. So the answer to the question, is watching TV in your underwear more enjoyable than while clothed? So it's watching a uh, series, not TV. The answer will be yes, okay? Whether you're watching TV or streaming. So in this case, the simple effects are different, but they have a different size. So this is, how do we call this kind of interaction? An ordinal interaction for what variable? For? We're looking at the simple effects of what? Clothing. Clothing. Everybody should see that, okay? We should, we should all train to see that. We found the simple effects of clothing, right? Clothing among streaming, clothing among TV. The simple effects of clothing are in the same direction. So, from the angle of the clothing variable, we have an ordinal interaction, not a disordinal interaction. So we saw in the previous slide that this is a disordinal interaction for the screen time. But at the same time, this is an ordinal interaction for the clothing variable. Okay? That does not contradict one another. This simply says that the main effect of the screen type is not really interesting anymore. 
But the, the main effect of the clothing is, right? It's always better to watch in your underwear in this case. Okay? So this is an ordinal interaction for which variable remains, keeps the order. Right? This simple effect of clothing is the same direction as this simple effect of clothing. Right? So the variable of clothing has an ordinal interaction. No. Okay. Going back here. Okay. From step one. Let's look at this simple effect. Okay. 50 minus 10. Is it better to be in your underwear when you're streaming? Yes. yes. And, TV. and when you're watching TV. Right. So these simple effects don't have the same size, but they do have the same direction. Okay. So the interaction from the angle of clothing, the clothing variable, is called an ordinal interaction. And this is an interesting example because the interaction from the screen type variable, from the angle of the screen type, that's the previous slide, we saw it was disordinal, right? So this is disordinal for screen type, ordinal for clothing. So the question here, if we have a disordinal interaction for variable A, does that necessarily mean we have a disordinal interaction for variable B? The answer is no, because in this case, we have an ordinal interaction for the clothing variable. And the conclusion is, the description of the interaction and its meaning relative to the main effect, right? These interactions, the descriptions, tell us something not only about the interaction, but about the main effect, can be different based on what we focus. Now, the way we know, that's the difficult part. How do we know what are we, which interaction are we describing? We have two kinds of interactions now. It's the same interaction, but from different angles, it has different descriptions. So, again, how do we know which interaction are we describing? The description will come from the simple effects you're analyzing. The simple effects and the main effects. What's the description? So, here we're, we're analyzing the simple effects of clothing. So, we're describing the Interaction from the angle of clothing. Yes? There must be interaction in clothes and the lines can cross each other. If there was no interaction, the lines... Line... Ah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. In this case, yes. In this case, yes. If you're looking at the lines variable. Okay? Yeah. But if you saw before... Just sec. In this case, there is no crossing there's still one disordinal interaction. What I'm saying is, don't rely on crossing. You're right if you're looking at the lines variable. Absolutely right. But don't rely on that. Okay, try to analyze it slowly, try to understand what's going on, and then you'll see it. Yes? So, um, if you want, I mean, one of the principles of the interaction is that if there's an interaction one way, there's necessarily an interaction the other way. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. when we're describing the interaction as, let's say, ordinal from the clothing perspective, uh, I, mean, when, when we, when we, what's the, I mean, what's the significance of describing that way versus the other way? So it just tells you a different story. That's the point. But it's, but it's supposed to be the same story. It's the, it's, but it's, it's a complicated story. The question today is, are the main effects relevant? Okay. Because last week someone asked me, wait, but if we have an interaction, why are we even analyzing the main effect? Right? We have the interaction. But now we have an interaction that keeps the meaning of the main effect, 
right? An ordinal interaction keeps the order of the main effect, and a disordinal interaction does not keep the order. Right. Now, you'll describe this interaction, and you might be interesting in one variable, but I'm going to read your paper as well, and I'm interested in the other variable. Okay. You'll describe it from one angle, I want to look at it from the other angle. Okay. And it might be a diff, right? You're the, you're the TV versus streaming expert. I'm the clothing expert, okay? okay? So you're interested in one thing, I'm interested in another thing. You have the data to describe both. All right. So that's the point. The data tells us a complex story, and we need to understand it from all angles. I mean, I get what you're saying. It just seems like it's uh, overly complicated. I mean, you're, you're right that, okay, so it is, it is complicated. <coughs> I'll tell you one thing. In most papers you'll read, the study will describe it from one angle. Usually, think about the story today. The assistant said what? The assistant said that the effect of the screen type, the simple effect of the screen type, will be different among the underwear group than the clothing group. So the assistant set an hypothesis about the interaction for the screen type. Right? That's the angle that the assistant was interested in. He was not interested in the angle of the clothing. So is there a difference like, about the, uh, like which the IV has a greater effect? Or which has the polls more? Around? Which is more interesting to you? Which is more? OK. That's, that's it. It's, it's really an aesthetic choice. It's a theoretical choice. It's a statistical choice. <laughs> And it doesn't depend on the uh, main effect. It's no. Say, no. If it's just, more, if it's more no, like the main effect, you can say the main effect doesn't matter, so we should automatically go to no. the No. 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 It's just what's more interesting. Yes. Uh, even when we have an ordinal interaction, though, the main, I understand the main effect is the same direction, but it's also irrelevant in a sense. Because it doesn't tell us the whole story. It doesn't tell you the whole story, but you can still feel confident about saying, look, the main effect is. Is there? Okay. So think about let's say uh, Ritalin. Okay. So let's say Ritalin will always give you better performance. I don't think that's true. But let's say Ritalin always gives you better performance before a test. Okay. But if you have this type of ADHD, it will be even better. And if you have this type of ADHD, it will be a little less. So your point is that we're still we're comfortable saying that Ritalin will help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Coffee, right? Uh, coffee is a bit less controversial <laughs> example than Ritalin. So coffee is always beneficial. But if, I don't know, if you're drinking this type of coffee, maybe it's a bit less beneficial. And when, you still understand the directions here, when, we, when, we, when, we're, com when if we're comparing the simple effects, mm -hmm. for example, in this case, we're comparing the simple effect of, uh, of clothing yeah. within streaming, simple effect of TV, then you say we're looking at interaction from the angle from the of angle the clothing. Of clothing. Yeah. yeah. Because we analyze the simple effects of clothing. Yes. With your example, you had the research assistant who had a very specific hypothesis yeah. that was based on intuition, but we'll forget about that for now. Yeah. Um, and let's say that you look into the interaction, like in the first few examples, he doesn't find that. So like he doesn't yeah. find his hypothesis, but there are other interactions. So would he continue running the data or would he just Interesting throw it away? question. Interesting question. So in actual research, a lot of times you go in with a certain hypothesis, which doesn't come true. <laughs> okay. Uh, and one way of looking at it is saying, okay, it didn't come true, so maybe I did, took a wrong turn. I'm going to tr try another study and trying to replicate that. But let's say you replicated your study and two times you found the same effect. Okay. In that case, you'll say to yourself, okay, my original hypothesis was wrong. I'm going to try to understand what's going on here and I'm going to formulate a new hypothesis. Okay. And now in my next study, I'm going to check this new hypothesis. Okay. So it's always interesting to analyze. If you have data, analyze it. You are correct that the researcher from the get-go, he could have just looked at the data and said, okay, I'm wrong. Obviously, I'm wrong. The descriptive data, 
can tell me I'm wrong because it's the different direction they were looking at. But my point of view, if you're looking at from uh, actual actual research, you have data, you'll analyze it. You didn't just uh, uh, collect data for weeks or months to just say, oh, I'll just, I'll stop. I won't even look at it. You'll always look at it. Okay, let's continue. So you said absolutely correctly that if we're looking at the lines variable, you sh we should find this kind of crossing, okay? So what happens from this direction? So this is, of course, again, a new example, okay? So now the simple effect of the clothing, streaming, underwear is better than clothes, and for TV, underwear is not better than being clothed. You can see it here. Now you have to choose which line you're looking from. Red, so this in this case, it's purple to red, minus 40. Purple to red, plus 10. Okay. It's of course important not to say, oh, this is plus 40, and this is plus 10. Right? The lines cross, they switch places. Yes? We have purple lines like that one, so it also means that the other two perfects also one line is going under and the other one but I can show you a situation. I don't know what this is. For example, okay, this. Okay, so this is A1, this is A2, this is B1, this is B2. Okay, so in this example, if you're looking at variable A, this line is going up and this line is going up. So, so this is an ordinal interaction for A. But if you're looking at B, one line is going down, one line is going up. This is disordinal for B. Okay. So again, don't take your chances with, don't trust the crossing. Okay, don't trust, don't look at the X. Try to analyze it completely. Yes? Um, can you just tell us again how to phrase, for example, if we're looking for the simple effect yeah. of underwear and clothes under streaming? Yeah. Can you just say the phrasing again? Is it the simple effect of? The simple effect of, effect of the clothing variable among the streaming group okay. or the streaming level. Okay, we have two more slides to go, and we're going to make things even more complicated, okay? I know some of you, this will be like, okay, it's too much today, we're not going to take this in. It's in video, okay? All the videos are online, before the test, before the quiz, you can go look at the, the video again, look at the last slide that you saw, and it said, oh, I'm, I'm falling asleep in the class, so just go over it again. So what happens if we have a three by two interaction? Okay, how do we call that? So let's look at it from the two angles. Okay, so first of all, let's look at it from the screen type angle. Okay, screen type angle. From this angle, we're looking at the simple effects of the screen. So we added one more level. So now we have a little bit more uh, provocative option. We have underwear, clothes, and new. Okay. Some of the participants were in the news. Um, so when you're wearing your underwear, streaming is better than TV. When you're clothed, TV is better than streaming. When you're nude, again, TV is better than streaming. So would you say this is an ordinal or a disordinal interaction for screen time? This ordinal, right? Not all the simple effects are aligned. So for the answer, the question, is it better to watch TV or watch streaming, the answer is still complicated, right? You now have only one option out of three that complicates things, but still, the answer is complicated. So the conclusion is the description description of the interaction depends on all the simple effects. All the simple effects. 
Now let's look at it from the other angle. Okay, from the other angle, we're looking once at the simple effect of clothing among the streaming group, and once the simple effect of clothing among the TV group. Now, here's something that I am telling you in advance, we're not going to ask you, we're not going to ask you to say ordinal, disordinal in this kind of interaction, okay? But what is important is that you'll know that all these averages, okay, you have underwear, clothes, and nude, all these averages represent one simple effect, okay? So, this is a simple effect. All three of them together is one simple effect. So what we are going to look at is this versus this, okay? and this versus this. And you want to compare these two, okay? Are these the same? And are these the same? If it's in the same direction both times, then you say that this is an ordinal interaction. If one of them is, one pair is in a different direction, okay, this will be a disordinal interaction. So for example, I'm changing one of the data points, let's say... You don't compare the 50 to the 10? No. Why not? It, it will, you can switch the rows and then you'll do that, but you don't have to. Basically, it will give you the same answer. Okay, so let's say it's now I'm doing this. Yeah. Oh. Ready? 50. Okay. So now, okay, in this case, this is bigger than this, this is bigger than this, that's fine. But now, clothed is bigger than you when streaming. Clothed is smaller than you'd when watching TV. Okay. So now I've changed it from an ordinal interaction to a disordinal interaction. I'm going to switch it back. So. Okay. So in this case, all the directions are in the same direction. So we're calling this from which angle are we looking at this? Angle of which variable? Clothing, right? Underwear versus clothed versus nude. And you can see that all the lines go up, or you can look at it as going down, depends on how you prefer. All of them are in the same direction. This is ordinal interaction for clothed. Okay, here is a summary, okay? Here is a summary, last slide for today. So, we can describe an interaction based on the direction of the simple effects. So if you have this table, okay, and you're looking at the simple effects of A, okay, A1 versus A2, so simple effect of A among B1, simple effect of A among B2, of course you can just switch the table around, right? It's not important that we're looking at A and not at B, right? It's, it's random which one of them is in the rows and which one is in the lines, ah, uh, column. So, when A2 minus A1, the simple effect of A among B1 equals to the simple effect of A among B2, and they're equal to the main effect of A over and above B, we say there is no interaction, okay? That we know. One simple effect equal to the other simple effect equal to the main effect, no interaction. In this case, I told you last week, when we have additivity, the main effects tell the whole story. The main effects tell the whole story because there's no interaction. Okay? You don't have a complicated answer. Is there an effect for A? You're just looking at the main effect. That's the whole thing. When we have effect of A among B1, 
does not equal to the effect of B, of A among B2, sorry, and does not equal to the overall effect of A, we already say that there is an interaction. The colors are a bit difficult to see, but this is A2 is larger than A1, A2 is larger than A1, 